part one we covered the first three days of the Gwynir team's week-long Fortaventura trip. The lads did really well and caught some great fish, but some of our target species and, in particular, the big stingray had largely eluded us. But now we're into the sharp end of the trip, and with the island fishing well, surely it was just a matter of time before we started connecting with the big stingers. Even when the weather is fine in Fortaventura, getting bait from the supermarket can be a struggle. So when the wind is blowing hard and the sea is very choppy, the local boats struggle even more to meet demand and you can have some serious bait issues. Are you disappointed? In these stressful times, I like to focus on keeping my own morale up, <laughs> usually by using my camera to torment my companions. You love it, really. Right, you really don't like being filmed, do you? Oh, no. Luckily on this occasion our hunt was successful, we hit a good load of fresh scad. This would prove to be our last load of fresh supermarket bait for our week. After nailing down our scad supply, we decided to hit a beach that I'd fished once before that would hopefully offer some shelter from the very strong northeasterly wind. The wind was still cutting in but the conditions were very fishable, although the swell would make landing anything large difficult. I decided not to fish this session and just film the lads and truth be told, I wasn't expecting that much. From the off, Varian decided to tackle this venue by sending one of his rods out to long range using a clip down dongle rig. Varian's favourite bait throughout the week was half a scad lashed with a good wad of bonito rope. Sam was keen to explore the lure potential in the surf, which did look tasty for a toothy predator to be on the hunt in. Unfortunately, just before dark, Ryan had a piece of majorly bad luck when the tip of his rod snapped as he was casting. This was an absolute catastrophe as we hadn't brought any spares with us and Ryan had no choice but to try and patch up what was left and soldier on. Varen helped Ryan make a quick field repair and Fortune rewarded his helpfulness moments later when he was first into a fish on his long range rod. Varen's fish fighting game is strong and he had soon navigated his fish through the shore dump and onto the beach where it was revealed to be a white skate. These cool looking fish are a pretty common capture in the Canaries and seem to almost always be much the same size. It's important to remember that much of the surface of these fish is covered in very sharp spines. They can make a right mess of your hands if you grab them in the wrong places. You definitely need to wear thick gloves to handle this species without risking injury. Sam was next to hook up and his fish was putting on a good show, bending the old faithful any fish anywhere six and bait into a pleasing curve and treating us to the sound of line being ripped at speed from the clutch of a spin fisher. I'm excited, I think it's going to be a good one. I think being on the high ground here definitely helps, yeah. rather than water level. Sam's fish proved to be another cracking white skate, a first for him and a new PB that he was rightfully made up with. Next, it was Stu's turn. Put line at the start. Oh! <laughs> it's on the one as far as I could cast it again. Yep. <laughs> Stu's fish was fighting like a stingray of some sort and as it came into the shallows it started to stick to the bottom, typical behaviour from a round fantail ray. In the end the fish ran out of water and Sam was able to gaff it and drag it to safety. The round rays have very soft bodies and are impossible to grab hold of properly during landing. Some anglers choose to drag them by the breathing spiracles, but this can cause them significant damage and it's arguably kinder to gaff them in the wing. The wings of this ray are dense and if you're careful, you shouldn't tear them with the gaff. Just as we did for the butterfly rays in part one, we measured the disc width of our fantail and rufftail rays and then used conversion charts to get an approximate weight reading. This fish went a smidge under 40 pounds. I've linked the charts we used in the description. Varian's distance rod was next to show a bite, his line dropping slack before tightening up slowly as the fish moved away. Varian made quick work of bringing his fish to the shoreline, soon beaching his second white skate of the night. It's really beneficial to have a couple of pairs of hands when unhooking some of these species, especially when using circle hooks, which can be awkward to remove. Another cracking fish. Yeah, 
don't think it's even a fit. I don't think it's even a wreck. Ooh! 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 Oh, oh, it's no cut. Why are you going so far? Stu said after this was his most enjoyable battle of the week. A good sized butterfly ray that insisted on swimming up and down parallel to the beach, wiping out almost everybody else's lines along the way. This was one of those fish that really did not want to be landed and tried every trick in the book to stop salmon varian extracting it from the shore dump. This part of the beach had a prominent lip that the savvy butterfly used to its advantage. Varian ended up leader in this fish, but the hook length parted as he drew it to safety. Hence why Sam slipped the gaff in to draw the ray to dry ground and help control it for unhooking. So far the night had been notable for its lack of one of Forta's most common species, but Varian fixed that with his next bite and his long range rod, which resulted in this session's only angel shark. It had been a fantastic session, but after Varian's angel, sport slowed up and we decided to head back in the direction of the digs and fish another mark on the way back. If you've watched part one, you might recognise this venue. We fished it a total of five times in our week as it was the most sheltered place we all knew and always reliable for a bite or two. Again, Varian's distance casting did the business with a small common stingray. This is the same species as the fish that can be caught in some parts of the UK and Ireland. On the previous session, Varian had been on the far right of the group and closest to the rough ground that bordered the beach. With two white skate to his rod already, Varian figured that the skate seemed to favour the more broken ground and had deliberately positioned his long range rod close to a patch of reef that was visible from his spot on this mark. This rod was soon away and whatever was on the end seemed to be a good bit more sizeable than the stinger he had just caught. This fish fought well and used its bulk to give Varian a good contest. On the heavy gear, however, his capture was more or less a foregone conclusion and Varian was soon sliding his third white skate of the night to safety. We weighed this fish out of curiosity and it made just under 27 pounds on the scales. Class angling by Varian. Oh, I'll put one out, off that reef could be a white skate up there. <laughs> oh, he's cracked the canaries on his first visit, hasn't he? I was like, nah, I don't think you get me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were literally just saying that, Sam, weren't we? We were like, we don't get the white skate up here. You do. <laughs> He <laughs> calls himself the Ray Bastard. There's a story for that. On our second night, Sam had managed to hook a sizeable round ray on his spinning rod. Well, on this night, he did manage to hook one on the right rod and reel, but happened to be fishing with a two hook flapper for Bream. I don't want to lock it up too much because of the uh, rig that's on there. 30 pound amnesia. Yeah, three out hook. Not designed for battling monsters. No, it is not be. It's not ideal to be stuck into a 50 pound plus fish on a bream rig, but Sam was in tune with his gear and knew how much pressure he could apply and when to apply it. He certainly had much more control over this one than he did the one he hooked on the lure rod. Uh, <laughs> There he is! We were all tired and owing to a bit of miscommunication, I missed getting a photo of Sam with this stinger, but I'm certain it would have gone £50 if we had measured it. Sam had caught a round ray of nearly £300 on the previous year's trip though, so he wasn't too bothered about missing a photo with a little one. Ryan and Varian headed for home shortly after Sam's stinger, with Stu, Sam and I staying on for another hour, with only a moray eel to show for our efforts. These fish are absolute devils to deal with and very bitey, so watch out if you encounter one. The next day dawned bright as usual, but with the wind still strong and ruling out much in the way of daytime fishing. The lads had told me about the huge mullet they had seen in the harbour at Coletta de Fusta the year before, and being a keen mullet angler, I was eager to have a look. I found it funny that they actually have little vending machines to buy food for the fish on the pontoons. There were plenty of mullet there, but no real monsters on this occasion. Still, there were a few tidy fish in the mix and it was good to see them. 
The lads had also told me about a bream-like fish they had seen that spent much of its time swimming upside down. I hadn't been able to figure out what it was from their description, but as soon as I saw them for myself, I realised what they were. This fish is known by a few names like Salima, Salpa or Calbreen, but what's most interesting about it is that its flesh can contain toxins that cause hallucinations when ingested. In fact, some Mediterranean cultures used to eat it to get high. The standard advice from modern day folks who have fallen foul of the cow bream's trippy nature though is to leave it well alone as the experiences can be extremely unpleasant. For the evening's fishing we planned on simply press and repeat and heading for the same two venues again. It was clear that there was potential for a big fish at the beach and not long after we set up, Varian collected on that promise. excitement level among the landing party. Nervous. Pretty high. Nervous. <laughs> Knowing we're about to get very wet. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly in pain. <laughs> if for some reason one of us cuts it off, I'm gonna run off. <laughs> Varian's gonna be too tired to catch you though. <laughs> <laughs> This ray measured 113.5 centimetres wide, converting to approximately 111 pounds. Not a true giant by this species standards, but still a very big fish and a worthy adversary, particularly in the swell that was rolling into the beach. All told, this fish took about an hour and 20 minutes to bring to the beach. It's normal for fights with sizeable round fantails to take hours rather than minutes. Credit to Sam and Stu who did an awesome job of landing such a big fish in such sketchy conditions. The lad said this was by far the most difficult landing of the week, as both were barefoot on the hard cobbles and able to keep an eye out for a big, angry stingray washing around their legs. The man of the hour. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Woohoo! Congratulations. Thank you. 
Nice one, boys. Beautifully landed, dream team. Even before Varian hooked up with his big ray, I had pinched this tactic of throwing out a bait to long range on a clipped up dongle rig. And once the rods were back in the water, Varian's approach paid off for me, netting me two angel sharks. I hadn't caught an angel shark on my previous trip to the island, so it was nice to tick that box, although there was really no fight to either of them. Well done, bad. For the cameraman. Bites had dried up, so we made for what was becoming our standard second mark of the night. Just like on the beach, though, it didn't take long before one of us was locked into a fight with a proper stinger. This time, it was Ryan's turn. Oh, bites. <laughs> Ryan's literally seen a couple of stingers, dropped the bait right in between them, and one has instantly grabbed it and made right off. And now he's locked in battle. Ryan's rod lost about a foot and a half yesterday after tip casting. And what was already a stiff rod is now even stiffer. Oh, this is a nice shot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're related. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you even put the tripod? Do you even put your rod in the tripod? No, I just cast it out. Well, f there's one there. Reeled it back in. I'm gonna take it straight away. Ryan has a long-time issue with his hip that has knock-on effects on his back. He had said all through the week that it was bothering him, and he'd been taking painkillers for it. I hadn't realised how seriously it was affecting him though until he hooked up with this beast and started to go through the ringer. Luckily, the lads were all committed to supporting Ryan in taming this brute. Good hang. I think it's a decent fish for this. Yes. Stu, yeah, what's your reading of the situation? Big. Big. Unit? No. No? Humongous. <laughs> Ryan's stinger headed for an outcrop of big boulders that extend out some way from the pier wall. Once it made it, trying to drag it back towards us only succeeded in fouling the line on a rock. It was clear to me that unless the line was freed, Ryan had no chance of landing this beast. The other lads had already contributed to the battle, so I thought it was only fair that I put down the camera for five, stripped my undercrackers and swam out to free Ryan's line, and hopefully his fish. Why is it not going in You come into the steps, Ben, are you? With the fish free and running angry, the fight was back on. That's good, that's what you want. Get the right way now. Right, we're all good, Ben. He's going out, out. After running clear of the boulder snag, the ray quickly went back to standard bottom hugging tactics, and Sam suggested that Ryan use my little china shop special stool to help spare his back for the rest of the fight. You can see how this uh, tipless rod is responding. The playing action resembles a scaffold pole. So it's working just as much against Ryan as it is the fish. Reverse it, okay. It's always an anxious moment in these fights when the shock leader knot starts coming through the rings. Sometimes the battle can stall with a knot stuck in no man's land between the tip ring and the reel, and these are not happy moments as you want that knot on the reel so badly. Not good, we'll get it on the reel the next one. I'm going to say it's 157 pounds. <laughs> oh, uh, it better be. <laughs> yeah, it better be, otherwise I'm a pussy, aren't I? <laughs> All right. Yeah, go down a little bit. And uh, stop. If you want, follow him again. No, nah, because he's going to go. Yeah. You don't want him over there. No, he's going again. Right. You're on leader, though, aren't you? Yeah, but not much. No. Ray's literally stuck on the wall now. Getting very close to the end. It's nervous times. Ready to go down? Yeah, we're going down back. Ready? One, two, three, go. With the knot on the reel and the ray stuck to the side of the wall at very close range, it seemed this was virtually a caught fish. But then, disaster struck. As I was moving into position to record the landing, Ryan's leader parted with a gut-churning crack. 
During the time the Ray was stuck in the snag, the leader had suffered a lot of rub damage and had given out just as the battle seemed all but won. This was the second big stinger Ryan had lost at the landing stage, and I understood how he felt having lost one in similar circumstances before. It's a horrible, empty feeling. You're knackered and have nothing to show for it, but it's part and parcel of big fish shore fishing, so unfortunately, losses like this are something you have to be prepared to live with. Oh, that's one that truly rubbed that. Yeah. Keep it all the way up. After consoling Ryan as best we could, we went back to fishing and Stu's bite alarm suddenly squawked into life with a fast run. In contrast to Varian's distance casting tactics, Stu always put one of his baits barely a rod length out from the wall on this venue. This was a top tactic as he caught the lion's share of the fish we had from there like this, although this particular fish was the only one of the week that fell to his distance rod. Butterfly. Oh no. Is that a stinger? Yeah. yeah. Have I just absolutely beasted it? Stu went as hard as he could on this fish as it was determined to make it to a distant boy rope, and it wasn't long before he landed a good sized common stingray of around 50 pounds. Stuart Beardsley. Very nice. Definitely a PB common stinger, right? Common stinger. Yeah, let's have a measure on him. Whip that in in no time at all. I would officially say that got beasted. Beasted. But Stu, is it a unit? <laughs> this was our last bite of the night. We were all gutted about losing Ryan's big ray. We started formulating plans to redeem ourselves the following night. With high hopes, we returned to the venue where we had done so well on our second night, and it looked like we were in for another good session when on my first cast, what looked like a little rattly bream bite turned out to be from something else entirely, as the rod went round in my hands and line began peeling off against a firmly set drag. I'm going to call it now, this is a roughie. You reckon? Yeah, it's not really sticking too bad. Try and bring him to the, round the wall yeah, and back to the corner. Yeah. And that's the ground with the extension. Yeah. Yeah. Good job of bought my rod in. Definitely would have cut you off. Thankfully the lads had quickly cleared their lines from the water, so I didn't have to worry about the ray taking my mono mainline into an assault course of braid. It's really important when you're fishing in a group with mixed main lines that braid users are very quick to get their lines in when a big fish is hooked. Even if the person hooked up is using braid, they are likely to be using a mono leader and taut braid will slice right through it. You've got 20 minutes left then. I love it when you can feel like the water pressure on the line. Line. Awesome. I was really enjoying myself with this fish, along with a big butterfly ray, which I'd already caught on day two. A rough tail stingray was what I really wanted from this trip, so I'd not caught one before. The fight with this species is more dynamic than it is with a round ray, as the rough tails don't stick to the bottom as much and use more of the water column. I would say it's a more enjoyable fight overall, and nowhere near as physically gruelling. After 16 minutes of line singing battle, Stu gaffed the angry rough tail and got it into a position where it could be safely unhooked. You have to watch the tail with this species as they can be more aggressive with them than the round rays. You also need to take care with the gaff on rough tails as their wings are much thinner than a round ray and tear easily. Landed, Ben. That gaff. Watch out for that tail, lads. Yeah, Stop recording on this. It's common for people to overestimate the weight with this species, probably because they figure that they have a similar weight to dimensions ratio as a round ray. In reality, on the charts we were using, rough tails convert to about three fifths the weight as the same width round ray. Make sure to measure accurately and use the conversion chart if you want a sound weight estimate. This rough tail measured 124 centimetres across the disc, converting to 85 pounds. 
If I had to visually estimate the size of this ray, I would have put it at 100 pounds or so, showing that it's easy to overshoot if you're just eyeballing it. Unfortunately, apart from a few smaller species, the rough tail was our only good fish of the night. And as we waited for runs that never came, the lads started reflecting on our week. But, you know, we're out here on a week that's been horrendous and we've found places to fish, haven't we? Yeah. Most importantly, caught plenty of fish. We found a few fish. Well, <laughs> as a team. As a team. <laughs> Yeah. But again, you know, I'll stand here and go, I've been here three times now and I've had good weeks out here as well, so mm. it's just my turn, isn't it? I mean, I, I've brought the bare minimum, just a rucksack full of terminal and that's allowed me to catch pretty big fish. You don't have to have loads and loads of gear for it, do you? You have got more jam than Hartleys though, to be fair. <laughs> There's not many people that have landed a, a big stinger on a two-up flapper. So. Not long after, I discovered that Varian had just done something truly shocking. You threw back a boga. Sam ID'd it. It was a baby. That was... That's Canary's crime, that is. No. Throwing back boga. No, I was just happy. Day six, I finally got a boga. <laughs> Forget the stingray, the white scape, the angel shark. Trash fish. I got a boga. The boga is the one. Yeah. The man who catches boga knows true happiness. It's an ancient Chinese proverb. How have you enjoyed this week? Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? I'm pretty spot on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a special kind of place. Trip of a lifetime, for sure. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Make memories. Boga memories. Yes. That should be the title of this video, shouldn't it, really? <laughs> boga mem Boga nights. <laughs> <laughs> in search of the boga. <laughs> no, not happening. Oh. <laughs> what happens when Stu drops a fish in a crack? Oh, the blood's gone to my head. <laughs> Ooh. Don't know, it fell off. It was a good size though. With the night wearing on, we decided to have one last crack at our backup venue. After returning the previous night and going straight out for an early morning lure fishing session, Sam was running on an empty tank. How are you feeling with one hour's sleep? Not bad, to be fair. Not bad? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm ready to get catch a monster. Oh, yeah. I like it. Mm. Got a hole in my boots. Working hard. As usual. Sitting here blanking again. Night is young, my friend. It's a hard life. <laughs> Believe it, they will come. Believe and it will come. Mm. Sadly, the fishing gods didn't care much for my beliefs and half-heartedly threw us the last angel shark of the week before we decided to pack down and return to the sanctuary of our apartments. Look at that beauty. What do you think of that, Ryan? Oh, amazing. Was that worth coming to Fort Aventura Oh, yeah, for a week, a week for all that. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> the plan for day seven was to have a daylight knockabout session on a pier we'd never tried before. It was never meant to be anything more than a species bash, but when Stu's float suddenly disappeared, things got very hectic very quickly. Oh. Woohoo! Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, you see that run? Check a bit there. You see that run? Oh my god. Literally just got that raccoon. Oh, it's going the other way. Oh, barracoon, surely. Oh, big barra. Oh, we've got that run with epic. Look, <laughs> <laughs> no, what's a bonito? It's a bonito. Oh, we've got a bonito. It's an English as well. Get the net, Barry, get the net. Bonito. Barry, in that net extends, mate, bonito. if you need to. I think it's a bit stiff, but it does. It's a first bonito. Oh, he's gone again. Oh, Barry, what was that? Oh, my God. Get 
them everywhere, don't you? Stu? Yeah. Is this a unit? It's a fucking unit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting one for three trips. <laughs> He's full of beans, isn't he? Oh, that's, a, that's a decent fish, man. Oh, it's not the right size now. Benito is the way. Look at that. Teeth on that boy. I'm a happy man. You look a very happy man. Sam had done at least some luring at most of the spots we've been to through the week, hoping for a barracuda. Oh, nice one, finally, boys. he nailed one on the surface lure. Barracuda! Hello, barracuda. Yoo on a lure as well. Yep. Yeah. That, must, that must have been why I just hooked on a lure. Barracuda. Look at that. Many hours of patient luring many, many hours. have yielded a top result. As the light dwindled into nothing, we agreed among ourselves that a proper meaty feast and a few beers were in order, so after heading back to get cleaned up, we hit the steakhouse. <laughs> so we're leaving now and what's the weather like today? The wind has halved, there's no white caps out there. Sod's law. <laughs> <laughs> the following morning we packed the cars for the last time and made our way to the airport. It's always a mix of emotions leaving a place after a fishing trip. Personally, I'd had a good week so I felt happy with what I'd caught and I was delighted with what we had caught as a team and captured on camera. A good fishing trip should always leave you wanting to come back for more though, and I think, for all of us, there was plenty of unfinished business left on that island. Descending below the clouds for the first time back in the UK, and seeing snow covering the fields was a bit of a shock to the system, reminding us that reality now for the foreseeable and much colder weather and much smaller fish. But Fort Ventura will still be there the next time we're able to jet off to an exotic angling destination, and it's a place that I would wholeheartedly recommend to anyone with a taste for big fish from the shore. We hope you've enjoyed the videos from this trip. If you have, please give them a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in the videos, you can leave it in the comments below, message us on our Facebook page, or come into the shop for a chat. We'll always be happy to help.